Okay, for the first video here, we'll just start with some basic triage and try to unravel really the next stage within this document. So here you can see uh, I've got the hash, the SHA-2, that's just in case I forget to add it to the video description, but um, I'll try to add it to the description. Usually I remember uh, a link to the Malware Bazaar. So if you wanna grab this file and follow along, you can. Um, once you've extracted it from the zip file from the Malware Bazaar, you'll see that it will extract with a, you know, with the SHA-2, and then dot the file extension. And the file extension is dot doc. In fact, if you looked at the malware bazaar results, you'd see that it was actually tagged as a doc file. But we want to confirm what we're actually dealing with. And so we can use the file utility. This will be pretty good at telling you that this is in fact an RTF document. We can also open this file up with a hex editor. And you'll see looking at the first few bytes of the file that we have the magic number or the, the magic bytes for the RTF. So that'd be the, the left paren backslash RT. Uh, I believe that's all that's required per the specifications and then F. So RTF is typically what you'll see and then the version number. Now, when it comes to these RTF documents, especially if we suspect in the context that it's being used for an exploit, I'm, I'm looking probably for shellcode at this stage and maybe or maybe not going to spend the time trying to understand how the exploit actually works. Uh, with the RTF document then, we're going to have some you know, somewhat human readable control words, such as this object data, that's going to represent embedded objects and data that, that is contained within those, as you can see here, is going to be hex encoded. Now, one thing that stands out to me is that we have the, the hex pattern here for doc file. That would be the magic bytes for an OLE or a CFB, a compound file binary, so an OLE file. Um, so likely that's the next layer that we want to extract. So we can go back to our terminal. Now, um, you'll notice that I started this video in a PowerShell prompt. Um, I'm not uh, like an avid PowerShell user and I've actually experienced issues with, um, you know, like moving around binary data with the PowerShell uh, inside this PowerShell prompt. So I'm just using this for this video so that I can use the little commandlet here for get file hash. I'm gonna move to a normal administrator command prompt because I have not had issues with this. So. Um, with that being said, our first utility up is RTF obj, and this gives us information about the RTF document, in particular, uh, enumerating those objects within it. As you can see here, we have one object, it's at index zero, and it looks like based off of the class ID, the CLS ID, uh, that it is in fact related to the Microsoft Equation 3.0 um, program, and uh, likely then related to these CVEs 2017-11882 or 2018-0802. So, we want to extract that doc, um, that object, and we can actually use RTF obj and specify the dash s with the index of the the object, and that will then save it using this default convention here. Okay, we can look at this file with the hex editor, and just to confirm, I like to just do this to make sure that before I use any other utilities or do any other analysis on the artifact, it's in the state that I expect it to be in. That is, I expect it at a minimum to see the doc file magic bytes here. Uh, so that's probably all the further I'm gonna analyze in a hex editor, because if we go back to our terminal, we have utilities like OLE dir that will allow us to further explore these OLE files. So here we have uh, the root entry, which is just common with OLE files, but we have one stream that contains this OLE 1.0 native object. Um, the root entry then is gonna contain information about the content within and uh, as we've kind of been unraveling here, uh, we're probably getting closer and closer to where the exploitation um, and likely the shell code, right? That's really what I'm after here is the shell code related to the equation editor. So in order to dump this, and this is where I ran into problems with PowerShell, those of you that are really familiar with PowerShell probably saying things like, yeah, yeah, that's a common thing. It doesn't handle binary stuff real well. Um, but uh, I guess this is the first time that it really, really got me because I don't usually do a lot of this level of analysis uh, in Windows for that matter, let alone in PowerShell, usually I'm on Linux, but I've been, I've been doing more and more of my analysis, trying to take this single VM approach to life. Uh, so anyways, we can do, we can use OLE dump to explore the streams and you'll see there's our, our stream OLE native. And all we have to do is uh, use dash S again, but this is uh, stream one and dash D will dump a raw, just the raw content, which means we're gonna get binary content here and uh, we're gonna wanna redirect that to a file. I'll just call that native object.bin. Uh, again, wanna grab this file, open it up with a hex editor, and I just wanna confirm 
that uh, more or less, this is what I would expect. Uh, if you, let's take away the redirection here, for example, and take away the dash D argument, and let's say we ran that command, you'd see that you'd get, you'd get the, the contents of that stream dumped, but it's in the format of a hex editor. So not only do we have uh, the ASCII representation, but we have the, you know, the raw bytes, but they're really ASCII as well as the offset. So if we redirected this to a file and we looked over at the content then of that file as we're doing here, um, right, we'd have all of this content. We wouldn't have the raw, actual raw bytes from that object. So uh, just like sanity checking <laughs> that you're, that what you're looking at is in the state and the form that you would expect it to be in. Okay, so what do we have here, right? Like we're, we seem to be losing context as we get deeper and deeper, but uh, this at this stage is where I would expect the shell code to exist. Um, and I have another video that I've recently published on the channel that talks about using this four byte sequence here. Uh, E8 is the call instruction. Um, we have, uh, I'm sorry, five bytes, five bytes. So E8 is the call, and then we have four bytes for um, the displacement. So uh, that is where should the call instruction, like relative to its current position, where should it go? That means that we have these three bytes being empty because of the endianness, little endian, um, and 07 then being the least significant byte. So it's going to be it's going to be a call instruction, uh, seven bytes from the current location, and this is a common technique. It's part of the position independence that shell code has to obtain when it gets injected into memory. Uh, it doesn't typically know where it's at. It doesn't load it properly like a PE file typically is, and so it doesn't have an image base and all those things, the benefits of uh, of being loaded into memory by the operating system. So um, it has to do things like a call because a call will push the next address onto the stack, and then after the, if, if after that call it pops what's on top of the stack, now it has an address. It knows where it is in memory, right? So this is a pretty good pattern that we can look for, and this could mark the beginning of our shellcode because this is typically something that happens very early on. Uh, now, um, there's many ways in which we could look for that, so I just thought with this video we'd take a moment and create a little Yara rule. So here's our one string pattern, just a sequence of bytes, E8, two question marks to wildcard each nibble of the byte value, as well as the, the, the trailing three uh, null bytes there. And then the condition is just simple, simply to match on that string. Now, the context is important here because uh, this doesn't, you know, we're not going to be able to check for uh, a file type here. We're, we're going to be typically applying this to these binary blobs, um, and this pattern is likely... Uh, not all that unique if you were to just start using this to scan a much broader corpus. So using this in a very limited context in which I have a file that I suspect to, to contain shell code, um, and it's not that large of a file as it is, uh, that context helps, makes this a little bit more effective. So now we can use Yara, we can use our rule, we can scan this file, and dash S will just provide the offset. So here we can see that not only did we have a match, on our, on our native object file that we just extracted. But at offset 50, we have our pattern. Our pattern matches, and this is the actual pattern that matched based off of our, um, you know, our original string here. Uh, we look at the file in HXD again, and you'll see at offset hex 50, right here, I guess I can't highlight that, but you'll see at off offset hex 50, um, there's the E8 byte. So uh, that's just another way of uh, using Yara to help to like get this potential, uh, potential entry point and the offset that it's actually located at. Okay, so now what we can do is we can use something like SC Launcher to um, wrap our shell code in a PE file. So dash PE will do that. Uh, dash EP will define the offset and dash O will be our output. So we'll call this uh, stage one dot SC for shell code. And now we should have our shell code file. Okay, from here, we'll open up IDA Pro. Okay, a free version of IDA, but because we're wrapped our shellcode in a PE file, IDA won't complain about that. We'll open up the file, and what we're hoping to see, what I'm hoping to see anyway, uh, is uh, exactly this right here, All right? Here's our entry point. There's E8070000000, so this is a five-byte instruction. We have the opcode, uh, and then we have four bytes for operand, and this how this is working then is it's saying from this current location, and this is a five byte instruction, call to the address that is seven bytes from here. So if we take 401050, we add five bytes for the current instruction, 
we'd have 401055. And then seven bytes, we'd have 401055C, right? So that's how that all works. So now we can follow that. Okay, so now when we land here, uh, we can see that we have a pop ECX. So that's moving into ECX, the address right here, 401055. And, uh, and then doing some adjusting. So not only you know is that a really good pattern to tell us that we are in the right location, uh, but then also we have some pretty good disassembly here. Okay, I think that's it for this video. The next video then um, we'll unravel the shell code and we're gonna be in like the, the quick mode, right? I don't wanna spend a lot of time. I'm not gonna go through a lot of detail of how all of this stuff works because these videos I would go on for hours. Um, we're just gonna skim through them. And this is my normal triage analysis flow. Let's just find things that are important and try to, um, I guess I'm trying to balance two things here. Like I do wanna give you some insight into how this analysis works, but I don't wanna stop and have to drill into everything. So. Um, that's typically how my analysis goes. Uh, look at the stage long enough to figure out how to get to the next stage. I guess one final thought is, of course, um, we could probably take that document, drop it into a, uh, you know, an online sandbox and have all of the answers, right? So the benefit of going through this is that you understand the different stages and can perform some analysis. Anyways, um, let's continue analyzing the shellcode in the next video. See you then.